الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله I just wanted to mention something as it just came, occurred to me and, it, and I think about it quite often and that is the importance uh, of the Arabic language and I've said it countless times many to and in many uh, lessons and videos and so forth uh, the importance of the Arabic language and the reason I want to say that and emphasize that again that one of the tips that I would say and this is a, a sheikh um, I have experienced this in my real life but also a sheikh we visited at his home sheikh um, Abu Salah Al Afghani also known as uh, Sheikh Muhammad Hisham Al Tahiri he's uh, one of the Kuwaiti mashayikh he's originally Afghani he did his PhD at Jamia Islamiyah and the Mufti did his came to Medina to do his uh, reviver you know basically to debate his thesis very fantastic very knowledgeable very young and very beneficial also Sheikh Obaid has done uh, at least one or two books with him or at the introduction of one of his books and also done some work on the Quran uh, about benefits in the Quran and other than that, he has very good relations with many ulama and is one of our scholars and anyway we were at his home and one of the things he mentioned he was giving us some advice and he said the importance of Adam al inkita uh, the not stopping when you're studying not taking uh, a break an intentional break I guess you could say meaning not st stopping and then then you have to start over and I can say personally for me this was a big problem for my for me due to various reasons uh, but especially with the Arabic language that it is very important and, and going back to Abu Salah so before we mention those benefits that he mentioned this and he said that now at that time he was doing his PhD thesis and I used to go and ask him have many sittings with him and ask him questions about takfir and stuff because his PhD was about that in the Khawarij and some of those controversial issues and I was doing my masters about uh, this uh, very similar to his topic so I used to get a lot of personal sittings and it was very beneficial and what he said to us in the sitting he said that because of this uh, in Qatar, because of people stopping in their seeking the knowledge, he said some of the brothers that he started, some of the students that he started seeking knowledge with, alongside of them, they were his colleagues many, many years ago in Kuwait. They now call him from Kuwait. They were calling him in Medina when he was in Medina asking him questions because they stopped seeking knowledge. So their knowledge, so then they forgot and they... Uh, perhaps even got off the path and also we had a very nice sitting with Sheikh uh, Abdullah al Mar'i, one of our Mashaykh uh, Yemeni Mashaykh when we were in Hadramaut and we asked him about some of these types of questions and he also mentioned the same he also mentioned that when he was in Damaj as a student under Sheikh Mukhbil many 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 years ago he said that the that also he used to know uh, there was a student of knowledge who used to memorize he said 50 Hadith a day. Can you imagine that? And these are people are Ahl Hadith. When you know, when you have seen what comes out of the Maj in those kind of places, the 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 Qawwa and the strength, especially in Hid, in memorization and the Mashaykh there, they're very strong. In Yemen, the Dawa is different. I would say, especially with regards to memorization, you find generally. Now, this is not in all cases, but generally the Yemenis they really focus on memorization very strong and the students as well they come out very strong and his and they have a different type of study a different type of program uh, but getting back to the point he said then this brother stopped and you know and he had to you know maybe deal with things of the issue uh, of the dunya and then khalas you know he stopped doing talib al but he used to memorize 50 hadith a day amazing not five 50 so the point is is to keep uh, consistent in your seeking of knowledge. The second point I want to mention with regards to the Arabic, which uh, applies to that, 
is that you can see a difference even with scholars, the ones that are very strong in the Arabic language and compared to those who are not as strong, okay? The scholars have different levels, they have different levels in fiqh, different levels, some in, even in aqidah are stronger than others and as they say, and men had your methodology in knowing these, these issues. Every, you know, they, they have different levels and they have, uh, so they, mutafawit, mutafawitin, they have different levels. So, uh, you can see a difference and it makes a big difference for us who, Arabic is not our language, our, 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 our mother tongue, that uh, the strength of your Arabic is going to make a big difference in your study. So keeping consistent, for me that was a big shortcoming, starting, you study some Naho, then you stop. You stop for six months, stop for a year because you have to travel back home or you have to this. But the point is, is try to be consistent in your studies. And I find that I have to even go back to books that I was studying years ago. Now if I had mastered those books, if I had memorized those books, or at least something from them, you wouldn't have to always go back. And it makes a difference in your ability to translate it. It makes your, a difference in your ability to understand. Because certain uh, sciences in Islam really depend on a strong Arabic language. Uh, a lot of Hadith sciences, strong Arabic language, Quranic sciences, very strong Arabic language, Balagha, and all these kind of uh, sciences, uh, you know, it requires a strong, it's not just simply reading and, and that you know enough Arabic you can translate some words and stuff. That's fine for the level, for your level. But I'm talking about someone who's on another level and they advance, there's a difference in the, in the, in the strength of your Arabic. Your Arabic is going to make the difference. Likewise, usul of fiqh. The stronger your Arabic is, the stronger you'll be able to grasp usul of fiqh because it's very much, usul of fiqh is actually the study more or less of the terminologies, of the terminologies of fit. This is one aspect of it. So it requires what? Terminology is what? Is language. So the stronger you are in language, the easier it is to understand those texts. Because my language is not as strong, I struggle more when I study, try to get into those sciences. But someone who is, has itqan, is very strong, they can go and, and the more language you have and the more vocabulary you have, you can go to books and you don't have to bring out your dictionary every five minutes. And then the chances, even with your dictionary, that you have the wrong understanding. You might not know the, the context. There's so much that goes into uh, language, whether it's English language, Chinese language, Arabic language. There's so much that has to do with context, that has to do with so many things. There's so many mistakes that we make. Uh, you know, as non-native speakers, the ones who are not as strong when they translate. There's a lot of halal. How many du'at have made mistakes that they've had to clean up because they mistranslated something from the sheikh or or some other statements of a book that it, it, they could have uh, changed the meaning or, or distorted the meaning. And all of this goes back to the language. So my advice to my brothers and sisters, one of the tips is get strong in the language. Try to master and and uh, as best as you can, I don't mean go super, super, super in depth, 10 years of mastering the Arabic and making that your specialty, but if that's your specialty, that's great. We need people who have that, uh, that ability as well, and that strength, but at least have enough strength to where you can really translate competently and you can go to the text with competence and study those higher sciences and go to other books with competence. This comes with the language. Then there's a whole nother science of what is meant, the mustalahat, the term terminologies that's meant by a certain scholar, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and I'll give you an example. You can't just go to Mijmu'a Fatawa and start translating like that. You know, the scholars, they'll differ over issues, and this comes to the level of knowing the context of what the Sheikh, uh, what Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah meant. You'll have totally different opinions. How many mashayikh that I can mention right now, and I'm not going to mention names, and they're arguing about certain issues, and they're both using the same hujjah, the same proof against one another because they understand the, the statements of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah differently. And they're arguing about it. One is making tabdi of the other shaykh because of this. So this comes with strength in language. Unfortunately, we do find that you have a lot of Sufis and a lot of people, uh, the Ashidis, there's a lot of Ashidis, and I know some personally, 
they focus on that language. They don't joke. But unfortunately, we get a little bit of Arabic and then we run and then we're busy talking and speaking about people instead of getting it's gone. I'm not saying everyone. Now, we have brothers who are steeped like that and very strong, but there's a lot who uh, do have this nux because their language is not that strong. Their language is not that strong. It may have some strength. They may, they can do stuff and deliver the message to their community and translate, but they can't take you to another level in those sciences because of the weakness in the language. And uh, this is just some of the things I wanted to say. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success.